Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Dolores Tarver. I'm a licensed psychologist here in Georgia, and I'm coming to you with your next mental health moment. Today we will be discussing what exactly am I trying to say? Now, I know you all have been there in relationships where you just felt like the communication wasn't really great. And possibly you are a person that has said some of these expressions that I'm about to repeat for you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I meant. F that. I'm in my feelings. You never listen. You always do that. I don't know how to talk to people. I just handle things on my own. I don't tell people what's going on with me. You are so hard to talk to. This will be a waste of my time. I knew what you were going to say. I knew what you were going to do. Regardless of why we use these things, they're not very helpful in terms of communication. Have you ever really wondered what I'm in my feelings means? I know that most people say it, but I don't even really know that they know what they're trying to communicate because what it does is it cheats us out of having to think about what am I actually feeling instead of just using that phrase. So let's talk about some of the effects of using those. First of all, it is really easy for us to get into the habit of using these labels and these expressions that we hear over and over again in media. They don't communicate very much information and they're left up to each person's interpretation, which is one of the communication pitfalls that a lot of the people experience. You know what you're talking about, but the person you're communicating with has no idea what you're talking about or they make an assumption about what they think that you're talking about. So what do we tend to do? We tend to under communicate important information and over communicate information that maybe is not important or that we've already stated. So I'll give you an example. So I may want for us to go out on a date. That may be a desire that I've had for a while, but I don't communicate that to you. Instead, I'll just keep talking about places that I'd like to go or talking about other places that people have been and never really express to you what I need. Then I get upset with you because you don't pick up on these subliminal messages that I'm sending you. However, when you do something wrong, then that's when I tend to over communicate tell you how much you've messed up, tell you how you mess up frequently, tell you how this is a pattern of how you've messed up. And after we talk about it today, we're going to talk about it for the next several days. And then I'm going to remind you a month later. All right. So we want to learn how to communicate appropriately about the things that are important. When we under communicate or we use a lot of labels, what it ends up doing is it stops us from effectively being able to express to each other what our needs are. So one partner may just end up withdrawing, becoming silent. They feel like every time we have a conversation, it's going to lead to an argument, so why bother? It shuts people down. It also makes us believe that it's not possible for us to have what it is that we want. So it ends up resulting in people staying in relationships for a lot longer than they should. You've been in relationships before. They should have ended two, three years ago, but you stayed in them. You got comfortable. The devil we know is better than the devil we don't know. So we just put up with things because we feel like, well, I mean, how do I know it's going to be any better than this outside of this situation? Or maybe I never really saw what healthy communication was supposed to look like. So I think this is what the pattern is. We tend to be really hurtful of other people and dismissive of other people when we don't effectively communicate. We build up that resentment. We start building that contempt. So now, because I don't feel like you listen to me, because I don't feel like we ever resolve anything or get anywhere, now we're just lashing out at each other and the communication then at that point can become destructive. We end up, I think, having a lot of issues of worth when we have problems with communication because then I start feeling like I'm not good enough because again, I'm making assumptions about what you're saying or not saying. And so one common misperception that people have is if you're not talking to me, then you must be talking to somebody. And then I'm going to internalize that as this person that you're talking to is better than me in some way or that there's something wrong with me that you don't want to talk to me. When it may just be that both of us don't really know how to bring up issues very effectively together. This also leads itself to issues of just feeling lost in a relationship. It's like I'm here, but I feel like my partner has died in a way. That's that whole people say we've just gotten to be roommates. We're here together, but that's all we really are. The intimacy is gone. The connection is gone because we never really learned how to effectively communicate or we communicated at some point in the past and then something happened, something changed. Maybe I feel like you started putting other things above me 
or maybe I started believing that you weren't concerned or care about me because you didn't ask about me. You didn't check in on me to see how I was doing. You just talk about yourself. And a lot of people will come to me and say that they feel like their partners have no idea who they really are because they never really invest in them anymore. So let's talk about how we can effectively communicate. Communication is one of the main reasons that relationships end. It also can be one of the very protective factors how relationships can be healthy. I'm a firm believer in stacking the deck. Put yourself around people that effectively communicate. And if you don't know what effective communication looks like, let's talk about some of those strategies. First of all, effective communication includes assertive direct communication. So that means I express to you what I feel, what I'm thinking, what I like not using those passive aggressive means of giving you that examples of what other people are doing is my way of trying to get you to do something that I want you to do. So I'll state to you, hey, I'd like to go out on a date. Now I know you all are thinking, this is really simple. People should be able to communicate, but you've probably been in relationships where it was difficult for you to communicate for a variety of reasons. And one of those main reasons is that we don't, pe don't believe that people are going to change their behavior and give us what we want. So we just rather not say anything so we're not disappointed. I statements is really important. We get into that, you did this, you need to do this, you like this, instead of stating what I like, what I believe, what I think. Part of communication that a lot of people don't realize is the most effective part is listening. Being able to effectively listen to what your partner said. We're so busy in our heads thinking about our retort to what our, our partner has said. Let me figure out how I'm gonna pick apart what you just said. Instead of, let me just repeat back what I heard you say. Let me make sure that I have actual understanding of what you're trying to communicate. That can go a long way in people feeling heard. I don't necessarily have to agree with everything you said. My job in that situation is just to hear what you said and be able to let you know that I did hear it. Removing labels. We are such in a bad habit of fortune telling, mind reading. I know what you're gonna say. I know what you're gonna do. I know what you were thinking. I know what you meant. No, I don't. I need to ask you and check in with you. If I think, hey, you may actually like to go out to this place to eat, I still need to ask you, hey, I was thinking about this place. I know you've liked them before. Would you like to go there again or are you in the mood for something else? Very simple once you practice it, which leads me to another point of practicing. We can't become effective communicators if we don't practice. You have to hear yourself saying words out loud. So sometimes you can just easily practice in the mirror. You can get your phone, record yourself talking. A lot of people don't like the sound of their voice. I'm not a big fan of the sound of mine, but what we recognize when we communicate out loud is then I get to hear what it sounds like to other people because in my mind, it may be coming out one way, but in reality, I'm expressing something completely different. And it's also important that you stay present focused. A lot of times we like to bring up things that happened six months ago that we already resolved, we already talked about, but I'm bringing it up in this situation. Now, part of that is oftentimes a way for me to distract from what we're talking about currently. So if you're calling me out on some behaviors and I have a hard time receiving feedback about myself, I'll bring up something you did so I can get out the hot seat, right? Deflection. That's not a very helpful form of communication. Let's talk about what's going on right now. If I'm the one who hurt you in this moment, then I need to sit and be able to hear how I hurt you and offer a sincere apology. A sincere apology can go a long way. Not telling somebody, I'm sorry you feel that way. Not telling somebody, well, you know, let me apologize for whatever you think I did. But actually saying, hey, I didn't intend to hurt you with that behavior. And I'm, and I'm, I'm so sorry that I did. I apologize for that. Let me really try to work on that. And then the next step of that is actually making the changes in behavior. When we're communicating with people about changes we want them to make, we do want to be behavior focused. You've heard me talk about that in other videos. What specific behavior do I want you to change? What do I want to communicate to you so that you can understand and be able to actually uh, change that behavior? So it has to be concrete and specific and measurable. I can't tell you to be better. What does that mean? That's a label. Your better and my better may be two different things. If I want you to call me multiple times a day, and, and that's another communication issue that partners will often have, our expectations are different. So we have to manage those expectations as well. If I expect for you to call me twice a day, but I've never told you that I want you to call me twice a day, how are you to know that? So I need to communicate that to you. And the other piece of that is you may not be a twice a day call kind of person. 
you may work 12 hours a day. And during those 12 hours, you are actually working. You can't have your phone out. Uh, you may have a break, but you might actually take that break to go to the bathroom and eat something. So let's communicate about what's realistic for me to do and come to some form of compromise about what I'm able to do. A lot of times we end up wanting people to be things they can't be. And so part of communication, again, going back to being around people that communicate in healthy ways, if you know a person does not have effective communication skills, it is very difficult for them to express their feelings. They are a person who has had multiple problems in relationships with these issues. And you know that you're a person that likes communication and likes to express yourself and wants to discuss feelings, then that might not be the best pick for you in terms of a relationship. So again, we have to manage what we think is actually realistic of other people. We can't force people to be who we want them to be. People are who they are. Now, there are some changes we can make within that, but those have to be changes that are realistic. If you are quiet and don't talk about yourself at all and never address things in relationships, you are not going to turn out to be somebody who talks nonstop all the time about yourself. Those things just don't go together. So they do have to be realistic expectations in terms of how effectively someone would be able to communicate with you. We need to understand our feelings. A lot of times when, and I gave the example earlier of I'm in my feelings, that is not an expression of a feeling. That is just you stating that you're in a feeling. I still have no idea what feeling that is. So instead of me saying I'm in my feelings, let me actually articulate what that feeling is. I'm sad, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I'm lonely, whatever it is. And so sometimes that the challenge with expressing feelings is that people don't even know what emotions are. So they have no idea how to articulate them. They can tell you what they're thinking, but they can't tell you what they're feeling. And there are a lot of charts out there, emotion worksheets that you can look at to begin to practice daily. What exactly am I feeling? So instead of saying I'm in my feelings, I can actually communicate what I'm really feeling. So that's a good goal for people to work on. I think it's in, uh, important too that we examine our beliefs about communication. Because as I said, some of us grew up in families where we didn't see healthy communication. We may have seen people argue. We may have seen people avoid and not deal with things at all. And I find that in a lot of relationships that get to a point where there's significant conflict, there has been a shutdown in that communication for, for various reasons. And some of them are that people just didn't learn how to talk to each other. When you first start dating, you're so excited and, and you're learning about a person and um, you want to go out on dates and you want to get to know this person. And so we confuse that sometimes with effective communication. Like, I don't know what happened. We used to do things together. And then as I talk to people more, they begin to realize, oh, this person never really did communicate. So I encourage you to not get caught up in those initial exciting feelings and not really build the foundation for a relationship, which one of them is actual communication. Communication, conflict intimacy, how do we work through things, being able to problem solve, which is another effective part of communication. We are going to disagree. And sometimes we're going to get so frustrated to the point where we escalate. We need to be able to stop either one of us and say, hey, this conversation is getting a bit out of hand. Let's take a break. Come back later after we've had a chance to calm down. Those are opportunities to use a safe word. And I encourage people in the communication to identify some word that you can use that will get your attention, not something that you would use necessarily in everyday conversation, but will key you both in to know like, okay, we need to take a break. Whether that's cornbread or buttermilk or um, uh, jogging or whatever it may be for you. Something that maybe is an inside joke between the two of you that lets you know, take a break. And that's an important part of communication. I need to understand what my triggers are. What stops me from effectively communicate? When do I stop going from communication to attacking? Because attacking is not helpful and it is not a, a good form of communication. So if I'm in attack mode, I don't really need to be talking to you then. Because what's going to happen? I'm going to say some stuff to you that's mean, that's ugly, that's nasty, that I'm going to want to take back later. And I can't because once it's out there, I can't lasso it back in my mouth. So it's really important that I begin to be aware of when I'm starting to get angry so I don't escalate to that point. Another thing is if you have difficulty being able to articulate what you want to communicate in words, write it down. 
Use some bulleted points. Get your thoughts together before you approach a conversation. Now, I know nobody wants to hear the dreaded words, we need to talk. But sometimes we do need some kind of transition into how do I bring these things up? And so it may be, hey, when you have a moment later, let's talk. But if you schedule time to talk as a couple, then during that time, you can already bring something up. I encourage all couples to have at least 20, 30 minutes uninterrupted, no distractions, no phones, no kids, no electronics time together to just talk. This is your time to what happened in our day. Um, how are you doing? Love on each other. And so if you need to bring things up, that is a good opportunity to bring things up. Or if you have your once a week, I call them Sunday meetings. They don't have to be on Sunday. But for the family meeting where we discuss things that's going on in the family or we discuss uh, issues that we need to address. And that can be as a couple or with the kids or separate with you adults first and then bringing the kids in as an opportunity to communicate. That's another way that you can bring up points. So these are the times that we bring up information. We don't wanna bring up difficult things on dates. Dates are supposed to be the time that you have fun, that you're nurturing your relationship, that you're reminding of each other, each other of why you care about each other, why you started getting involved in the first place, why you love each other, uh, reminiscing, romance, the intimacy connection. Not a time for you to wail on somebody's head about how they messed up your day, okay? Because that's not an effective time to do that. And it also makes a person reluctant to want to go out on a date with you later on. Like, you know, drop a hammer on me when we're supposed to be enjoying ourselves. Let's work on our timing. And communication is about timing as well. So if I want to be consistent in what I'm saying and I want to be effective in what I'm saying, then I need to plan the time to be able to effectively communicate and make sure that I'm communicating what I want to intend, that clear message, that direct message, the I statements, the using feelings, it being constructive and behavior oriented, that you're able to receive it. Neither one of us is upset. Um, and, and being able to accept that feedback because all of us have to accept feedback. We don't always like what people say, but that doesn't mean they're inaccurate in what they're saying. So being able to receive that feedback as well as give it in a constructive way. Attacking people, name calling people, that is not an effective way to communicate. Again, we're going to focus on the specific behaviors that we want to change. The more you practice effective communication, the better you'll get at it. And if you don't practice, then it won't get any better. And I can also guarantee you that if you don't talk to people, things are not going to change. So you have to put into practice the things that you want to see happen. I believe that you can do it. You have the resources and the tools. You just need to practice them. Be encouraged.